Hi everybody, it's amazing how much ground we're covering. We're already to the imperative mood. So this is going to be an addition to our indicative mood, which we already had. And then we also had the infinitive, which wasn't exactly a mood, uh, but, but was somehow separate. So now we're getting something beyond the indicative. We're getting the imperative. And what is the imperative? Well, you're probably familiar with this from English in, in sentences like go, or hey you, run this way. Well, what's going on? Well, what these are, are what linguists like to call direct commands. They're talking to you and they're telling you what to do. This is a command. This isn't an indirect command where I order the, the soldiers to persuade the general. None of that. This is you, second person, be commanded to do something. So small caveat on that. That's how we tend to use imperative in English. We, we tend to think of it only really pairing with the second person. Greeks have a third person imperative, which we're not going to learn here, uh, but that's that's equivalent to um, you know the French saying, well, some one French woman said this once and it was never lived down, let them eat cake. Now in English we have to say let, which kind of sounds like allow, but, but really in this context it's a command, it's a third person command because you're commanding them, not you. Let them eat cake is a third person imperative. We're going to get to this ultimately in Greek, but we don't need it now and we can just focus in on the second person uh, and that's going to be quite frankly more than enough. So, so let's put our favorite verb, luo, favorite because it's short, and this means I, I loosen, I destroy, I break down, however it's going to be free. So this is first person, singular, indicative, active. So that's, that's it. first person, I, singular, it's not we. Indicative, well this is uh, a statement of fact. Active, it's not passive or middle. And then it's also present tense. Imperative loses a lot of these things. Well, it's not indicative, it's imperative. That's, that's its mood. It can be active or passive. Here we're only going to be learning the active. We've only learned active verbs so far. Um, and then it, it can't be first person. It can only be second or third, and we're only learning the second here. Uh, and it, but it can be singular or plural. And then tenses kind of fall apart in the imperative, but that's also neither here nor there. So we've looked at luo as an indicative. Well, let's look at lue or luo as a imperative. So this was luo, I am loosening, I loosen. The command is lue, so we just have a plus epsilon, and this is for the second person singular. So this is you, free, dot, dot, dot. That's the command. So it's close to third person singular, he, she, it, loosens. And you might also be tempted to uh, confuse it with something like elue, he, she, it, was loosening. But you can tell it's not or imperfect because there's no past indicative augment. Um, and then this is a special ending. So we, we haven't seen anything that looks exactly like Lue before. You can always identify one of these second person singular imperatives, Lue. Uh, so let's try others. Send. So normally that would be Pempo, but we just make it Pempe. So this is, again, you, singular, send. Um, train. Therapeue. Well, actually, I need to change that accent because these are still recessive accents, so therapewe. So this is a little bit different than what we're used to in the present indicative because all monosyllabic verb endings that we had in the indicative were long. Here we have a short one that can send it back. Um, so thera therapewe, pempe, good. This was you, again, and all these you's can be implied. We normally don't say that in English, just, hey, send me the postcard sometime. 
uh, not hey you send me the postcard so and then here we just had train sometimes in English they like to uh, mark imperatives with a uh, exclamation point I don't think that's always helpful but this was the second person singular present active imperative great so that's Lue with an E so I'm gonna erase all that and then rewrite it in the corner Lue send sorry not send let's let's use free that sounds positive now let's talk about the second person plural this is going to look awfully familiar in part because it is <laughs> this looks exactly like the indicative second person plural so this can mean you are freeing or the same form although it's a separate mood at this point can mean y'all free I should have been more specific here because really I wanted to emphasize that this was plural y'all are freeing slash you all free y'all free y'all free the slaves free or destroy the bridge I don't know exactly what you want to say but you can get the point across so this is you know a little bit frustrating maybe uh, that the imperative looks so much like the indicative in the plural uh, we have one plural command that I've used almost every day in the actual classroom not so much on these online videos and that was kairate which technically means rejoice <laughs> or be happy but this is the Greek's word way of saying hello but this was hello in a specific sense hello y'all what if I wanted to say hello you singular mathetes I'm talking to one student at a time well what would I do well we now know that the verb to rejoice then is Cairo I am rejoicing so if I want to say hey you singular rejoice that is to say hello it would just be Kaira Kaira o mathete at that point because we lose the sigma from the ending mathete good all right well let's let's erase all of this I'm gonna write luete slowly but surely up there Uete, and this is y'all free. Now we're getting to that final bit where everything was completely regular for these thematic verbs who we were happy. Now we need to get to that stinky, athematic, irregular verb, Amy, I am, be. So what now what we're looking at is you, singular, be, and then also make it an orange y'all be so all you know be strong be faithful you know this is the sort of thing be this type of person so in the singular let's get back to that kind of purple magenta uh, this is done in a very irregular way and the form is isthi We'll see some more forms that look a bit like this in the future, but for now, this is really weird. Look at it, it ends in a theta iota. There's this S, but, but we can see, we know that the kind of root of all these Amy verbs tends to be this S. That's why we have ST and other things are happening. There's a sigma that often drops out. So it's related, but it's kind of weird. It's a little bit hard to see all of that together, admittedly. But so is the is the form, and then now let's go over to the plural, which is a bit more regular, and this is simply este. Well, this looks a lot like the enclitic form for you all are, which was este, or we'd write it that way. It won't necessarily need that article. The thing to note here is that these are non-enclitics. These are both properly accented verbs that will always be accented on this syllable. Be, y'all be, isti, este. So these are irregular. This one's a little bit more predictable. This one is completely out of left field. So we can uh, write these up here. 
Lue and Luete are transferable knowledge. We can put these with Therapello, we can put them with Pempo, we can put them with anything. Um, Isthi, and then to a lesser extent, Este are somewhat different. These are kind of learn them and, and just know them individually, but they come up constantly. Uh, so you'll be reminded of these. So y'all be here and then you singular be here with ISTE. Well, I hope that was helpful. Strange, but it's nice to be able to have a full new mood at our exposure. Note again that we're only dealing with the second person now. Greek does have a third person possible, but we're going to be getting to that in a later, and that was the kind of let them dot dot dot. But that's a strong let. Let in English might seem allowing or whatever. This is really a command. It is imperative. And then this is of thematic verbs. We'll get to athematic verbs later. And then this does also, we're just kind of tagging on because it's useful here, Amy, which is athematic and is also beyond that, just very irregular as the verb to be is in almost every language. So Greek, as always, throwing us some curveballs, but uh, you know, every language has them and we're getting used to them. So next time we're going to be talking about connection in terms of what conjunctions can be repeated uh, and how they might be used in combination with one another. This will open up so many exciting things that we can do uh, in the sentences. So look forward to that and see you next time. Take care.